Well, I, I think that the difficulty in it, and I'd, I'd love to get, uh, there, there's so many directions we can go on this, so bear with me. But I think that the, the difficulty in this is what becomes the overarching narrative then, right? Like there's all these narratives out there. There's all these different things you could do. <clears throat> and it also depends on like what alternative media you listen to. Like everybody yeah. wants to say there's one boogeyman underneath the bed doing everything. And, and I guess when we look at it, I've asked this question so many times of so many different people and gotten so many different answers. Like, who do you look at as the actual narrative we should be following? Like, you know, is it the CCP? Is it the World Economic Forum? Is it these different things? Like, for you, what's the most troubling narrative to freedom? I, I, I'll be honest with you. I think they're all the same thing, mm. um, which kind of people find quite confusing. And they say, oh, no, no, but, 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 but Russia is against such and such. It's like, yeah, on the face of it, they are. In the same way that George Soros is opposed to Israel on the face of it. But, uh, you know, when, when you get down to the nitty gritty, fundamentally, the, the goals are the same. And, and the overarching goal is, is control. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's control of a population, control over what you eat, what you drink, when you sleep, what you think, what you can say, where you can go, every single thing. But what they do is if they, if they were to come to me and you now and say, hey, dude, right, I, I want everything that you own. Um, I want you to run everything by me before you say it. Um, I want control over, you know, X, Y, and Z. I need to take you off the land and stick you in a, in a, in a, in a high rise. You tell them to jog on. You'd be like, you're having a laugh, mate. I've got a beautiful garden, views of the field. You're having a laugh. Why would I give that up? So then they create an issue. They create a problem. So they create a problem like climate change where, you know, we need to get people off the land or whatever. And then, you know, you create an economic issue where people suddenly can't afford to live on the land anymore. Farmers, for instance, can't afford to keep cattle and what have you. So then, they get the result they want in the end, but it's almost like they ask, they, they create a situation where you ask for it. Mm -hmm. Like I always think the same with like universal basic income and things like that. You know, the, the World Economic Forum's idea of you will own nothing, but you'll be happy. On the face of that now, that's ridiculous. So if someone comes up to you now and says, right, sign over your house, sign over your car, sign over everything to me, so I own it, you, you can still have it. Like you can still live in the house, you can still drive the car, that's fine, but it'll all be in my name. Mm-hmm. You tell me to jog on. You'd go, you're having a laugh, mate. I paid for this house. This is mine, blah, blah. Okay, two years down the line, I create a situation where you can't pay your mortgage anymore. You can't afford to run your car. You can't afford any of this. You can't afford to heat your house. Everything's gone mad. You've lost your job. Everything's bloody AI and robots now anyway. More and more industries are going that way. And then I come back to you when you're foreclosing and you've got the bailiffs knocking at your door. And I go, I'll offer you that again. You can still live in the house. You can still keep the car. You still keep the TV that that guy's trying to take out the front door. You can keep all that now, but you sign it over to me. Tell you what, mate, most people would sign it off. Well, you know you what's wild, though, is as much as people call it a conspiracy theory, like, like, dude, it's happened so many times in history. Like, if you look like, like one, so my, my master's is in ancient history, so I studied way too many things about Roman emperors. But if you look at um, the very first one, um, Augustus, right? You know, he's the adopted son of Julius Caesar, and Rome had just been through a hundred years of civil war, and... Um, at that point in time, uh, Augustus is fighting against Mark Antony to basically decide like who's going to be the guy in charge. And Rome had this office called the dictator. The dictator was somebody who would take office for six months. They'd make things peaceful and then they'd drop their office and it would go back to running as a Republican form of government like it was. Mm -hmm. So basically it was so bad and Augustus created peace so quickly that he then had this idea, well, I want to be dictator for life, so I'm actually going to tell people I'm going to lay down the office. So they tell me, to, so they so they demand me to take it, and that's exactly what happened. He said, "Oh, I don't want to be dictator for life. I've brought you peace." And people said, "No, no, no. You need to rule us." And it's we've done it so many times through history, man. Like, why don't we learn? Yeah, that's it. They create a situation where people demand their own enslavement, and they and they did it through through COVID, like. You know, when people stayed in their house or they only went out once a day or they, they wore a mask and all these things that they didn't want to do, they didn't do that for fear of the authorities. They did it because they were scared of what the neighbor across the road would say, or they were scared of some guy in the shop gobbing off at them in, in, a, in a Walmart or whatever. They weren't scared of the police. They weren't scared of Donald Trump, and Joe Biden, or whoever else. They're not bothered. It's that fear of, of essentially the other sheep. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my dad said it for years, like we've done away with the sheepdog. We don't even need that anymore. We literally kind of, we, we do the sheepdog's job ourselves on each other, you know? And, you know, for me, obviously it doesn't bother me. I, I won't go along with it, but I know so many people that did just out of fear of getting abuse. Like they mm -hmm. don't want to have that. Of course, no one wants to get abused. And so throughout that period, I was saying stuff publicly 
because one, I'm sort of un. These will be famous last words. I'm sort of uncancelable cancelable in the sense that I work for myself. So it's not like I've got to keep my boss happy. Like I'm just a self-employed guy. I do various different things that I want to do. Um, and so when it came to that period, I was like, well, I've kind of got a duty to shout even louder because I've got people private messaging me that I went to school with or played ice hockey with over the years or whatever going, dude, I'm, I'm with you. I agree with you. 